Yo. Hey. Can you hear me? You listening to Hashtag. W-A-W. What a week. What a week. Hey, Ta. Welcome to another edition, another episode of Wow, What a Week. What a jam-packed show we have for you today. We're hanging out with an amazing voice. She is Rafiki in The Lion King in Germany. We're hanging out with a dancer, entrepreneur. Uh, we talk about, listen, it's going to be an, in, like an incredible chat. We'll also be talking fresh money with African Bank. Audacity to believe. Yo. Can you hear me? You listening to Hashtag. W-A-W. What a week. What a week. Ladies and gentlemen, our first guest on Wow, What a Week. Representing KZN, she is royalty. In fact, if it was back in the day, chances are she'd be married to one of the kings. <laughs> Representing the Lion King, Germany. Please make some noise for Bongiwe, Rafiki, Injobukazi. Wow. How are you doing, girl? Gabila, <laughs> wouldn't you? Ukrand. Gabila, cool. Welcome. Thank you so much. Yo. <laughs> Yo, indeed. Bongiwe, Malunga. 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 Bongi in Jovugaz. Why in Jovugazi? In Jovugazi is um, my surname, my clan name is Malunga Nzovuka Jane. Ah. So I decided that instead of saying Malunga, I should say in Zovu, but with the Gazi at the end because oh, yes. I'm a woman. Yeah, you're the great you she know, elephant. The queen. The matriarch <laughs> of the, the herd. <laughs> yes. So I had to put that in there. So before we talk Lion King, before we yeah. go to, go to Germany, yeah, just uh, Bongiwe 101, like yeah. born, raised where? Ubongiwe uzalelwe enda weni ya semzumbe. Okay. Uh, a, a KZN. Sure. Wakulela emlazi. Mm-hmm. And watala ke all over South Africa. Thinking clearly, Johannesburg for 10 years. And as mm-hmm. Cape Town, like mkulile nje yonkindao. Yeah. Yeah. My man, why are you not lifting a chair when you stand? Hello, we're live here. Anyway, and this guy looks like Heavy K. He does. Why do you look like Heavy K, my man? Who's your father? Come here and <laughs> come here and show us your face. <laughs> anyway, so how yeah. did music happen to Bongiwe? So good he in Kingenega and Janem Tulen. Yeah. Um, it started in 2003 when I first I was so young. Like I mean, I love music. Bengalum Gulanji, Ekaya, Gibangum Sindoma Kilonebam Bayaz, they know which is there was that girl, ah. Ebima, outside and start singing for no reason oh, wow. and wake up my neighbors in the morning. And then one day, yes, we have auditions on radio, Kukulunyo Kozin, which we have auditions for I'm a pop stars. Okay. And then I was like, let me try this. Yeah. And I had no experience whatsoever because I just finished my grade um, 12. Okay. Then Ngahambangayo Zama, I made it to the second round, and then bang keeper. Uh, I must have been keeper, but I didn't know the song. Then later, I started auditioning for Lion King. Foot corner, I find out a rate when it and I auditioned. Quite one number auditions the Lion King, a playhouse. I ended up auditioning for that. Nakuna Sengila, where I am today. So, what year did Lion King say, Okay, it's you we want? Oh my god, I started auditioning for them in 2003. Yeah. I auditioned at four, five, six, seven, two thousand and seven. But yeah. okay, Bongiwe, si akfuna kuzobigu ni laun king Monte Casino. Okay. Si akfuna lugu tuenzu Shenzi, cover Shenzi, okay. cover Sarabi, and cover Rafiki. Oh wow. Kali sus katanga na clue, but ye bang kasha bang ni opportunity yo kali bo na jamba da bang bigum seven. Sure. Yeah, ok seven the theater actually. Mm. So you'd never done theater before? No. Now, eh, why in Kamba Bank? Okay, he was on Sixty Seven to a Bangazi. The Seven Zillion of Mongani game I did Sarafina in two thousand and four, and the Seven Zillion to Maranjovu I did a show, a bit on the journey that ah, went to Switzerland yes, yes, yes. in South Africa. So after that, I'm in Zangalut. Okay. I, I only did a pe- Peking singer was a Peking singer and Dando. Mm. Bangani, Nabang in Wabaya, but Undando, because I've worked for him. Longer. Sure. So, sure. Okay, so you've been putting in the work. Yeah. 
Kanani and Nan and Lungs among push and push and push until Gazan and Kunas and Gigula and King is Rafik. But for a lot of us creatives, though, uh, we, there's a point where we feel things are starting to happen. Until things start to happen, what's giving you hope? What's keeping you going? My mother. Yeah. Yeah, my mom, mm. without me getting emotional. Sure. Um, Tell us about Uma. Uma, hey, uh, she was the most strongest woman I know. Mm. Uh, she may, was may, may she a, rest in peace. Yeah, she was mm. a beautiful soul. Konkengi gone today to push and ugulwa, uwenzi zintos pumelele, no magunzima. It was her teachings. Yes. And... I think it's better. <laughs> and I'm like, Ma, Gaza Malan and Zamutim or Tishimilan, Mafunu Mund. But you can get Cholili Lumunum Sebens, La Conaman Patiban, and my post. Like, she believed in my music, but she was also scared. Uguti, so I'm gonna lose myself in Johannesburg. Oh, yes. So, Kelly Kays at Enina, she has this daughter who's 20 years old, who's mm, in Johannesburg. Mm. So, she is my rock. Because sure. when I was going through challenges in Johannesburg, Challenges like what? what? What are some of the Yo. things you, you have to deal with? You know, in Johannesburg, when I arrived, because I won't mention people's names, I was one of um group as a group of singers. So I mean with a couple of friends of mine from Durban, Satala Kona, without a blanket in Johannesburg. Oh my god. And then there was a time so if we hambile to that complex of Stalagion, because it was his big mele ungen and a certain time. So it was like a hostel with a curfew. Yeah. yeah. So Mobuye late. I ended up having to once. Oh wow. But close to the wall, because you I didn't lying. have I, I swear to God. Because oh, wow. I didn't have anyone like John Spagang And the only place I knew was that place. Oh, wow. Oh wow. Yeah. Yo. That's it. Other than that, it's it, it hasn't been good, but it's been good. Like, yeah, if it makes sense. So you get the role for Lion King at Monte Cassino. When does yes. Germany happen? Um, well, Germany happened in 2018. Sure. I 2011 after being a baking singer for Untando for a long time since mm. 2005. Sure. Um, I went to. Because nothing give up after Lion King South Africa. I mm. worked for Yona and then I was like, it's fine, let me just relax and be a baking singer. Sure. Then I, I go to a live playhouse in Pelezela. Um Ganwami Uyo Otishinela Ilan King. Cause mm. I was like, I get right. I'm done. Yeah. Manga figure la panu putuma or to maran jo voti bongiwe again. Yeah. And I'm like, I didn't prepare for this, like I just came. Mm. Ooh, ooh. I just arrived. Yeah, I just arrived. I just arrived. <laughs> and then when it's over again, again, and I, I auditioned. Kwakona belungu base Hong Kong. Then yeah. I, they hired me. Ngo guati munyago landilayo. March, I went to Hong Kong. After I worked in Hong Kong for five years. After Hong Kong, Do, what were you doing in, in Hong Kong? I was working as Rafiki, but oh, Rafiki Wakona. It's like a, a short version of Ilan King. It's ah. like a, a mini version, like a theme park version. Okay. Ilan King. So I was doing Rafiki there. So it was Rafiki the sketch. Yeah, like a, a mini Rafiki. <laughs> okay. You know, and then Ngasebens Wakona for five years. Man got the lap. Then I, I I got a call from the the the, the Disney team. Yeah. E.T. Bavula a production in Shanghai. Mm. And I'm like, okay, I want to do this because I sure. was already, you know, my artist do like exactly. you get tired easily. Exactly. So contract and I went to Shanghai and I worked there for two years. Mm. When I moved back to Hong Kong, I'm getting this call email again from the Disney's Mungi yeah. way. Um, we know you just got back from Hong Kong. We don't know if you can be able to but oh, wow. as Urafiki, we don't have a Urafiki. Yes. And mind you, fresh Urafiki, I've prayed for it for almost 14 years. Exactly. Like, well, like, well, King. You've been fighting ben, for Rafiki. Yes, ben, for Rafiki. Yes. Like the whole main character, like, principal of all principal, Urafiki. Exactly. In, in with my female principal. Exactly. So, Mabati. Rafiki, like full version, yeah, Rafiki. I was like, <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna exit this contract, mm. but in Zofia, mm. that's how I ended up in Germany. Bang for the long 2017, towards sure. the end, mm. 2018, I 
just told my boss that going to Germany was a dream of mine and also doing Rafiki was also a dream of exactly. mine. Exactly. So exactly. it was not easy. She she wasn't happy with the decision I took, mm. but I understood because figure for a month. Ah, yes. Then I went to Germany in 2018, January. But now you have children also. Yes. Where do children happen in all of this? When I, I had my daughter, yeah. um, when I, I started uh, with the Lion King, my daughter was there, but with Lali Kai, okay. with my brother in mm. Unkoska's work. And then when I went to Shanghai, I was like, you know what? It's time. Emma, Emma bring my daughter. Yeah. She was seven or eight at sure. the time. Mm. So, because I wanted her to travel with me. Mm. And then, from then on, Shanghai, Hong Kong, Germany, until I had my son. Mm. Yeah. So, when you're traveling with your daughter, yeah. are you in a relationship at the time? I'm are in you... a relationship at the time. I was in a, a, a full on relationship. Okay. Like somebody's fiance. Okay. Yes. And then, so your son happened in that relationship? Yes, my okay. son happened within that relationship. Okay. Yeah. And then what happened to that relationship? Uh, the relationship decided uh, to be dankas, uh, yeah. I think also it was affected mostly by the fact that I travel. I'm never uh, home. In fact, I was going to say, how do you manage a relationship or a marriage, but you're also traveling, you're on the road all the time? It's so hard. Uh, you're with cast and crew. And as you know, so even some easy will tell you, that you're with cast and crew so often. <laughs> you put your gayness to the side because there's a girl here. Yes. <laughs> it, it's so hard. I don't want to lie. Like, yeah. it, it takes a toll on the relationship because you are not with your partner. Uh, absolutely. L literally, Ngaha mm. 2011. So, this partner, I have an, I see him once yeah. or twice a year. Sure. Like, maybe for a month or less. Mm. So, I mean, there will be challenges then. Yes. Because I don't know if there's someone who can handle that. And also, on on the, on my part, there were so many things that was happening mm. on his part. And I sure. was like, no, I think it's time for us to say goodbye and while we're still good. Oh, wow. Then, yeah, before we hate each other. Yes. Mm. While it, we're still good. Yeah. Because it was, we were already, you know, but I, 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 I love my career. Mm. Honestly, I love being an artist and performing. In fact, the way me and you met, uh, it was middle of COVID. Yes. Um, I'm doing an office job at a friend's company. Yeah. Uh, because I've got all this time on my hands. Yeah. And then Oscar Mbo is trending. Yeah. Because there's a promoter who said Oscar Mbo didn't shop for a gig. Yes. And then someone does a Twitter space period uh, about house music and the industry. Yes. And you are in that space also. Within the space, yes. And then you're like, you want to work with me? Yes. And then I'm like, I'm sending you a beat. Yes. I send you a beat the same day. Yes. The next day you send me back a vocal. The vocals. And then we had a song. <laughs> yes, we had a song. I was like, this is wild. <laughs> you know, Fresh, I don't I don't think you understand when I ask when Zingo Manau and you literally open the door mm. like you didn't shut it you immediately mm. my heart though, mm. on that space it's on the top of the morning space i'm like but you have to do this this is for you because mm. god do we industry and you want to do this mm. and when you said okay i'm like this is real mm. okay Bongo, you have to pull yourself together <laughs> <laughs> and do this song so well otherwise yeah you're gonna disappoint him and then I went to the studio and we have three songs later. Euro, tell us about Tando. Why did you write Tando? It was because of um, the situation that I was in with my partner at that time. Mm. And there were so many things that was happening without mentioning him too much. Sure. And it was affecting me because mm. when I love, I love hard. Like sure. I, I gave him my all, like mm. literally. And when things didn't work out and there were so many things that were happening that I didn't like mm. and there were so people involved. That's when I, I said, sure. It was a cry for help. Sing, sing some more, sing some more. Sing some more. Sing some more. Sing some more. Oh, 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 and Yo. then I said, Tat your toe. I put your name somewhere. No, in yeah, there. you said, Tat. Yes, I, 
I just, I wanted him to listen to me because he knows that I'm a writer and he's sure. also a writer in music. And I just wanted him to listen to me. And the only way I could pour my feelings was to mm. just... To sing? Sing. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and three songs down. Yes. And, and more to come. And then, and more to come. Oh, that's exciting. And more to come, yeah. He, Rafiki is a massive Lion King star in Germany. Yes, she is. I've seen videos of German kids losing their minds when they meet you yes. backstage after the show. Yeah. How do you internalize all of that? And how you've become this iconic performer in Germany? Spussy is so fresh. It's yeah. a blessing, honestly. Like... You know, most of when you wanted something for so long and messy figure, you're like, God, thank you. Mm. And the only way for me to celebrate this is to allow these kids to enjoy this character that yes, I am. And yes. because I've wanted it for so long and when I got it, oh, I, I can't even explain it because it's so overwhelming how much mm. that Rafiki changed my life. Yes. Like it really did in mm. so many ways. So it, it's a blessing. It's a blessing to be known Mm. away from home in another country where they speak a different language, totally different than yours, but you still someone about Mazi So you've been Rafiki in Germany for what, three, four years? It's six years now. Six years? Yeah. How do you at a personal internal level do you avoid getting bored singing the same songs every night for six years? I'm actually learning King, they're so emotional and touching. Yeah. I think every day it's a brand new day, especially because of me being a South African and yes. an African. Mm. It's not easy sure. for an African child because mm. you miss home. Yes. So, but when Lion King songs, they have a way, man, of connecting with your soul oh, and your yes. spirit. So each and every day, it feels like I'm doing something it's new. It's a brand new day. Yes, because yeah. the song would place me straight to South Africa oh, every yes. day. When I get on stage and I start, mm. I'm singing in my own language and mm. in a foreign land. And that alone for me, it's pride and joy. So Jay, I never get bored. Like, because it's something that I wanted for years. But you guys also sing in German though. Yeah. How long did it take to prepare the German translations so that you're authentically sounding German? He, it took six weeks yeah. to learn the show and get on stage. Ah. Six weeks, they put you in. So which songs are in German when you perform? Um, Circle of Life. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Ewig in Kreis. Okay. Um, he Lives in You, mm -hmm. Er liebt in dir. Those are the two main songs that Rafiki sings in the show. Sure. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. And they are in German and the English part is in German. Ah, yes. And yeah, we can't, we can't yeah, as well as and be like, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> are you, are you going to sing uh, uh, for us? Yes. Maybe, maybe what circle of life in German? Circle of life. Okay. Okay. Mm. Let me, oh, spotlight. Okay. It goes like this. Von Geburt an beginnt das Erlebnis, wenn wir uns zur Sonne drehen, gibt es mehr zu sehen, als man hier sehen kann. Mehr zu tun, so viel mehr zu verstehen. Mm, das Leben hier ist ein Wunder. Alles neu, alles endlos und weit. Und die Sonne zieht leis, ihren goldenen Kreis führt groß und klein in die Ewigkeit. Und im ewigen Kreis dreht sich unser Leben dem Gesetz der Natur. Sind wir geweiht, wir sind alle Teil dieses Universums. Und das Leben, ein ewiger Kreis. Wow. That's the circle Yo. of life. Yo. That's the circle Yo. of life. You see, it's, it gets me emotional even if it's I'm German. emotional. <laughs> <laughs> that song is, oh my God. I don't know how it connects to the spirit, like to the gods. Yo. Like, it just connects. But your voice, though. Gabong. Yo. Gabong. So, you are raising your kids in Germany. I'm raising my kids in Germany. How long, much longer is the contract? 
Um, each and every year we have we get extended, mm. but this one that was gonna start that I'm gonna start um, in August. Mm. Or I'm gonna start. In, yeah, lo- it's a lot because mm. it's paperwork. Mm. I'm gonna start next year. It's gonna be like almost two years. So I think they're trying to stop this thing of making it one year contract. Yes, but each yes. and every year you have to renew a contract. Absolutely. It's like But you end up being there for more than six years. I don't know how I'm. I'm there, but it's it yeah. a good money. The coins, it, it, they, they're good. They're okay. Mm. Cause so do they pay you and you take care of everything or do they arrange accommodation and everything else for you guys? Um, in Germany, because I'm going to speak about Germany. In Hong Kong, yes, they did arrange accommodation and pay for everything. Mm. In Germany, it's like you, you pay for your rent, mm. you pay for your water, electricity, you pay for everything. La Panda Fresh. Like, you have a TV license. You have a TV You On that paycheck that they give you, there's a a paycheck mm. and then when you my bills are so you take care of everything up. basically yes and then the, uh, the raising children in Germany how expensive or cheap is it it is really expensive because the currency as strong as it is no mm. absolutely so but Uguti school fees I was called Kiko Lenzab. Ah yes. So government yeah, from this thing. Everything guy. works. Everything yeah. works. Ne na se crash my son because he goes to kinder. Mm. U government we are coke lugu ya gum to na wa mekit. So somehow government we are Caesar, especially when you are a mother. Sure. We are was uguti akbele out when it comes to raising is into that. Is mm. thing about one. So your son is a German speaker. Literally, you could missing this. You know, coconut guys like you could missing this in Germany. It's Zulu, yo. So, so it speaks this Zulu with a German accent. Like it's not even Angmas, but you could It doesn't even sound like he speaks Zulu when he's speaking Zulu. Yeah. Oh, oh, then my daughter at least because she's an only background is Zulu. Exactly. Yeah. And when I got to Germany, I told her, please, sister, please don't lose his Zulu because if you know what man, we am seven zini and. I'm tired and I, I want to be able to talk to you in my language where you can understand my soul. And she really took that and what was fun this zoom. And it's one of the reasons why I come home all the time so yes. that my kids don't lose Ubuntu and they must come and walk on this this on the Yes. Ungena yes. Lananjo is a blessing, Gule, Gule country. What else is Bongi working on? Um, music maybe? How else can we support you in your career? Ubongi were uh only single I really zile ebizong guti e let it rain. Came out in July, right? It came out yes in yep. July. We release ne 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 group ebizong guti in neotonic. Okay. So Mouse has all music platform, Likon and Lutul, it's called Little Rain, Mouse Bongi Wayne Tufugazi, and Neotonic. Uh, so if, s- sing a bit for us before we let you go. Let it rain, no, bless me, and let it rain, let it rain, let it rain, no, bless me, and I've got the story to tell. I said, things are moving into my direction. Stars are shooting into the moon. There's a rainbow on the other side. Yeah, it's a summer time in here again. Birds are singing in trouble. Or when I released that song, I wrote the song as well. Um, mm. it's a prayer. Yes, it's a testimony. Cause I'm from Nukchela Finally, I'm saying I'm not gonna So I wrote that song. Mangiti, let it rain. I mean. Agnetim vula e busi so and gichela bantu guti things are moving into my direction and mm. stars are shooting for me which sure. is what you did for me mm. thank you it's a pleasure yeah dude uh, I'm so proud of you how far you've come um, I, I I I talk about how you're one of my COVID blessings because had there not been COVID chances I would have not have met. You know what I mean? So I'm glad we met. I'm glad we crossed paths. I'm glad we've started a working relationship together. And I'm looking forward to working even more with you. And uh, hopefully one day I'll travel to Germany just to see you on stage. You have to, please. Uh, playing Rafiki. When you come to Germany, please, you have to tell me. Because mm. I want to make sure you have a first row seat when I sing Circle of Life. Yo. And yeah. Tell city in front means when you sweat, that bead of yes. sweat. Yes, <laughs> 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 my facial expressions. 
<laughs> Even when I'm singing and, and spitting and saying my lines, I'm like, hey, I'm feeling mad. You, I know Uti, you were my blessing. Mm. Ku music, I think it was fresh. Like, I go to the music industry, like I thought it would be when I left KZN, mm. but... Mm. Like Pumaj is an artist, they independent, they male. Mm. But when I overly low me and go overly with ease and Gixilo Lokalin, when the Wava Lula Mina, and it was a blessing for me. We spoke to Mina, you can get in Gabonga, Kakulu, in Tizoyako, Yavela. I'm so grateful that I met you now live because mm. I can see your heart, like it's visible. Yabonga mm. Kulu. We'll see you on stage. Period. And we will buy and stream your music. Please do yeah. let it rain. Bongiwe in Tlavugazi, Nenio Tonic. It's a collaboration. I wrote the song. Gabong. What a legend, guys. Bongiwe in Tlavugazi, Rafiki Malunga is about to leave the building. Thank you. Thank you. Love you and I love you lots. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, they make it like yo. It's complicated. I man, it's this. That's a hard. It's complicated. I know it's not. <laughs> it's complicated. Nyabonga Kolo Fresh and your team. Thank you. Wow! Wow, what a week. Presents Fresh Money. Proudly brought to you by African Bank. Audacity to believe. Hi, hello, and welcome to another edition of Fresh Money. Brought to you by African Bank, audacity to believe. It is Women's Month. We are chatting to great women, women that we feel you ought to know if you don't know them already. She is, I love her title, uh, please welcome from African Bank, Gobisa Nchona. Correct. But not from New Brighton, <laughs> the other Nchonas. <laughs> so you are not related to the great playwright, uh, Ubabu Winston. I will say somewhere in the family tree. We'll claim it him. connects. Yes. We'll claim him. Yes. It does connect. So, what is your position? I want you to say it yourself because I think it's a dope position. <laughs> so, I am the group uh, chief people officer for African Bank. People officer. Correct. In simple English, what do you do? In simple English, I am tasked on mm -hmm. behalf of our executive team. Mm -hmm to ensure that we drive all things to do with our people agenda okay. in so far as it enables our strategy. Um, I'm going to ask you this because I take it this is one of the reasons why you've been tasked with this. And I think it's something we take for granted often. Mm -hmm. The importance of people in business. Mm -hmm. No, I think, uh, I mean, you've touched on it, Fresh. Um, mm. I think for us, especially at African Bank, mm. We believe that people are the lifeblood uh, of what we do. Um, they are part and parcel of what we deem a competitive edge. Sure. Um, and therefore, it then becomes key that we ensure that in whatever we do, mm. it's people or colleague-centered. Ah. Uh, and a huge part of what I and my team do is mm. really driving those type of initiatives that ensure that not only does the bank perform, mm. but that the culture yes. uh, and the colleagues uh, are also aligned to that. So typically a day in the life of a people officer such as yourself. <laughs> it's what a wow. <laughs> <laughs> so you get to work and typically what do you need to do? So I get to work and I think um, in a typical day, it's always one, the reminder that says, where are we in terms of the commitments mm. we made on all people initiatives? Yes. So I'll give you maybe a, just a sense of some of the things that we are busy with. So uh, I'm not sure if you'd have seen, but African Bank has been certified a top employer mm. three years in a row. Wow. So what that means is that our people practices mm. insofar as our strategy is concerned, insofar as our development initiatives, wellness initiative recognition, they are top tier. Sure. So my day would then foster around where are we with the initiatives we said we're doing on people mm. uh, in terms of all the different facets uh, sure. of that. So my day really evolves around that. My day evolves a lot on collaboration with mm. my colleagues, uh, but also collaboration with uh, 
colleagues across the bank as well, mm -hmm. just in terms of the things we do for people. Uh, simple English, it could be how we source talent and get mm -hmm. talent in the bank. It can look at how we retain talent for the sure. bank. It looks at how we support uh, our colleagues in terms of wellness and mm. well-being. I mean, there's lots on the go. So, so those would be some of the things I would do in a typical day. Let's talk about the importance of not only acquiring the talent, but developing the talent. Mm. Because I think um, as a person that doesn't do a nine to five, I'd be frustrated if I felt like I was stuck on a treadmill mm. and I'm not being developed and I'm not being given something to work towards. How important is development? So <clears throat> they don't say audacity for nothing when mm. they talk African bank. And I think for us, development is important in two facets. Mm. I think one, there's obviously the structured one, but two, the stretch. Mm. If I look at African bank, I mean, in the past, so, so our strategy says we're a bank that's evolving, that's scaling. Uh, that's digitizing, becoming customer centric. Mm. And part and parcel of what we've done, for instance, we've done a number of acquisitions and integrations. So what you would find is that the talent that's already inside the colleagues, they are stretched because they're mm. doing more than what they would have been doing a few years back. Ah, okay. They so have you don't moved, have a choice but to grow. Correct. <laughs> they have moved roles. Mm. Uh, they are working and collaborating differently. And then what we do uh, from my space and my team is then also say, what are some of the structured development interventions mm. uh, that we give uh, to colleagues? I think that's that. I think secondly, around development, especially on our internal colleagues. I mean, if I look at one of the key things we do, we've got this great um, culture and leadership mm. journey that we're on. Mm. And I think at its core, it really talks around how you master yourself. Um, it's centered on a number of components, but the key one I wanted to link up is one that says, I will lead myself. Oh. Uh, and if you then just look at that, it says, mm. how do I constantly evolve? How do I constantly sharpen my soul sure. as a colleague at African Bank before mm. I can lead with others? Oh, yes. uh, so it's one of our four commitments. So it's I lead myself. I lead with others, I lead through others and in service of others. But I think if you look at the I will lead myself, it says how do you constantly develop, mm. uh, but also we are also tasked to say how do we support and enable sure. our colleagues to do the same. Mm. Now, your average human being, I'd like to think over the last 10, 15 years, has probably gone through more anxiety, stress and depression than possibly in the history of uh, humankind. What is the bank doing in terms of the well-being of the colleagues, as you call them, and, and making sure that people are not getting burnt out, people are not mm. coming to work, but they're not going to deliver because mentally I'm not okay, for instance? Yeah. That is a reality mm. um, for us at African Bank. And it's a reality that's not only in terms of where we see the bank. I mean, a few years back, COVID hit. Mm. Um, it changed how work is done. Sure. And in how work is done came elements of well-being and it spotlighted um, mm. elements of well-being. I think secondly, for African Bank, I mean, we are evolving at pace and at scale. Mm. So it does uh, tell us that the reality of our colleagues is one way uh, elements around well-being, work-life balance, mental, um, uh, mental uh, elements come to play. Mm. So we've done a number of things. Uh, I think we've recognized that we are on a massive change journey. So how do we support our colleagues? And mm. I'll name just a few things. Um, I'll start with the one that is around recognition. Mm. Because we have said, how do we recognize colleagues for a job well done? Sure. Because think about it, no matter the the tensions you go through. Mm. If one is recognized for a job well done, it sure. does uplift one. So we've got um, a top tier recognition program mm. that includes how colleagues recognize one formally, informally, mm. local trips, global trips, that's one. Mm. And then on the more serious side around wellness. So we've partnered with a number of um, 
of vendors out there. And what they've helped us with, I think we do also a surveys mm. where colleagues can gauge the level of where they are from a mental fatigue wow. uh, perspective. Mm. And what they've come with is then a number of those interventions which mm. we run in the various divisions. So we've, sure. got, uh, we've got a number of those where we help support colleagues in the various facets. Is it closer to burnout, how they manage and navigate work? I mm. think that's one. We've also done something that we've introduced earlier this year, uh, and those are what we call well-being retreats. Mm. Uh, and then we said, insofar as teams, for instance, sometimes go on their offsite for planning or sure. strategic things, they take a day out to do some wellness or um, type of initiatives mm. and, 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 and activities. And I, do, I must say, they do come back reinvigorated. Sure. Um, we've got medicals, we've got the other stuff, a doctor um, mm. on site, we've got the typical gym on site. Uh, but I think if I look at the full offering, insofar as our value proposition is on wellness, mm. I do think we've got a number of good initiatives that truly help and support sure. um, the colleagues through, um, through this journey. But it is a reality that we find to say, uh, mental well-being is a key thing uh, mm. that colleagues sometimes um, battle with. So how do we put the right tools that support them? At management level, I'd like to think and believe that you guys go through a special kind of stress, <laughs> uh, having to deal with whether it's exco or with the board or your deliverables. How do you relax? How do I relax? It's an interesting one. So. How do I relax? Mm. Um, no, I do a number of things. I mean, I come from a, a big family yeah. and I think uh, family centers me. Mm. Uh, so I'm big on family outside of work. Ah, yes. um, so that's one of my things. Mm. I love um, sport, tennis. Mm. Uh, so I play tennis uh, with family. I'm a reader of note. I don't read as much mm. uh, as I do. Uh, but I probably think to be fair to you, I don't do a lot of the things I used to do mm. purely because of where we are in the journey. So sure. I think it's one finding those spaces and time to do that. Mm. But what's been great as an executive team, we've said, let's also lead from the front. So sure. let's not put forward these initiatives and then we don't participate in Absolutely. them. Absolutely. So as executives as well, we also partake in the um, in the medicals because mm. they also help to say then from a health journey how do you uh, uh, go through that mm. but also the wellness retreats when we also have our off sites mm. uh, we are also able to partake in those now in closing let's talk about the future of work from your uh, perspective i think the future of work is evolving mm. ever so rapidly mm. um i think from where we sit, not only as a bank, but also as a human capital function, it's to say, how do we keep up with all these rapid uh, movements in terms of work? Mm. Um, how do we ensure that technology is truly seen as an enabler? Sure. Um, how do we ensure that the ways of work in the mm. organizations are those that showcase where we are at and this talk to digital ways of work? It talks to how work becomes and is done in agile format. Mm. Um, so I think I would say banking is also evolving. Uh, our bank is growing. Um, and I think for us, really, at African Bank is to say, how do we keep abreast with all these changes and how do we become relevant? Mm. And then from the function then that we play where people are concerned is to say, how do we provide them with the right toolkits Absolutely. to keep up with this? Uh, and how do we ensure that they also sharpen their saw mm. as the evolutions take place? Now, as we wrap up this episode and it being Women's Month, um, you know, often we lament how women are expected to do it all mm. and to do all of it as an A plus student. Uh, you must be a mother, you must be a sister, you must be the matriarch of the family. And if you are a corporate hun, mm. as uh, you people are called, <laughs> how do you get all of that done and still keep your head above water? Are there any secrets or any um, hacks that you've learned that have made this journey a bit easier for yourself? I wouldn't say there's secrets, but I think I'm one of those um, who really says we had women before us mm. who uh, crafted the building blocks for where we are at. Mm. Uh, and then the calling then is on us to say, how do we create those spaces that our kids, when 
they are faced with this, yeah. it doesn't become an uphill journey. Um, so I think it's always uh, to change constantly daily the narratives and the stereotypes that says this is for women, this is for males. Absolutely. Um, because the sooner we change some of those, mm. I think then the lesser the load yes. uh, on, on the female. And the expectation. Correct. Mm. But I think we're getting better yeah. at those. I must say, I think we really are getting better at those. Mm. I think we're seeing males as well becoming allies, oh, yes. uh, which I think for me is the greatest thing of all. I think mm. if the males could be more allies to this, mm. it truly lessens um, the load. But there's no, um, there's no secrets, none whatsoever. Mm. And, and, and I think uh, after all is said and done, we're all just making our way through the dark, really. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> We've got hope, but we see the fog and we know yeah. we'll be on the other just side. Just feel your way through. You know there's something at the, at that the other end. That is true. No, that is yeah. true. Any is closing true. words before we let you go? No, I think my closing words is just really one to say, I mean, African Bank is mm. truly the place to be. Uh, not only from a banking perspective, but if I look at the employee offering, yeah. uh, I mean, one of the things I always share with colleagues, I said, even our colleagues, we don't see ourselves as colleagues. We see mm. ourselves as movement makers, sure, sure. Uh, which means we realize that this work is greater than us. Mm. Uh, so I think those would be my, my closing ones to say uh, it really is the place to be. Uh, if stuff. you want stretch, if you want to be developed, if you want to be challenged mm. uh, and learn, I think this is the place to do that. Great stuff. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And, uh, thanks for being a great chief people's officer. Yes. At African Bank. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please make some noise for Obisa Jona, chief people's officer, officer at African Bank. Audacity to believe. Thank you. This is Wow! What a week. What a week. Celebrity guest. Celebrity guest. I have it from a credible source that our guest, I quote, is not friends with time. So I'm thrilled that she made it here almost on time and that she even has a gap to spend time with us today. She's been doing a lot of traveling, being in demand as a choreographer and creative director all over the world, and we'll soon be seeing her on Netflix in the Yano's love story, Yano Love. Her dance studio in Dorenfontein, right here downtown Johannesburg, is a hub of talent, and I need to sign up for lessons if she'll take me as a true left-legged student. Let's give a wow welcome to Bontle Mudisele Moloi, a.k.a. Chomi. AKA Bestie, AKA B, AKA Mamuloi, <laughs> AKA Ma Africa. Ma Africa. <laughs> that is the best intro I've ever heard. Hello, Ma Africa. Tell me how you're doing. Fantastic. How are you? Good. Is this the first time we sit down and talk? I think we, we spoke when I was at Metro about five years ago. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. But five five years post-COVID time, it feels like... A, a, a lot has happened since a COVID. A lot has happened since then. It, it feels like another billion people have been born since COVID. A thousand percent. Exactly. We've lost many as well along you, the way. You became a mother. I became a mother. Since. I got married. Great things have happened. Tell us about Africa. Oh, the most spectacular human being. Mm. And I think every parent feels that way, right? Sure. About their child. Mm. But... She really blows me away. And I think watching her grow and develop and have her own character, her own personality, her own likes and dislikes, mm. um, and just seeing her be, you know, just be able to, I guess, become independent so early kind of scares me. I like it, but yeah. it scares me. If you're into star signs, she is a Scorpio. So mm. she's super feisty. Mm. She is, um, yeah, she's very headstrong. Mm. But I like it because the world that we live in, a kind of maybe works better for a character like that. And, and, and I think we need to encourage especially girls yeah. not to be afraid to speak up. 100%. Um, because we are very quick to quieten girls down. Absolutely. Um, and I often lament this, that a lot of girls that I grew up with yeah. that were like that mm. are the total opposite as women. Mm. But as girls, they were exactly that. Uh -huh. But as women, they've become almost subdued. Yeah. They've become demure. They've become absolutely a, a, a good African woman. Right. And for um, me, that's a problem. One who is tamed. One who is... And for me, that's a problem. Yeah. And and, and my 15-year-old, uh, our 15-year-old, uh, mm -hmm. she's 15. Sure. And she dances. 
dances. Ah, yeah. And they are doing a dance piece mm. that does a piece, uh, a, a reference to uh, Jesus on the cross. Ah. But she's also a Christian. Uh-huh. So she told her teacher that I'm not comfortable with that ah. personality for me. Ah. I'm not saying you must change it, but I need you to know that I'm doing this, but I am not comfortable doing this. I'm so glad she could do that. And I said to her, I'm actually happy you did it. Mm. Because a lot of children just do things because that's what we're doing. 100%. They don't speak up. 100%. And the fact that you're 15 and you're speaking up for me, I'm like, wow. That's impressive. You know what I mean? That's and, impressive. And, and that's what I want our girl children to be able to do. Absolutely. I want that for my daughter as well. So mm. I, I'm very proud of her. Of course, sometimes it's like, I want to want to like when I go, I want to but I wanted to do that and I encourage it all yeah. the time. My family encourages it. I mean, mm. I'm from a matriarch led home. Sure. I've got three, well, two other sisters. Yeah. So we're quite, well, I've grown to be vocal, but we're very vocal open people and so mm. we're very my mom has created a space for us to be able to really lay on the table how we really feel about certain things sure. and make it a safe space and so she's adopted that very early in her life and I mm. needed her to grow up with that same you know chutzpah I guess how is Mr. Molloy coping with all this estrogens all over the place oh my god <laughs> I think he loves it. I think he yeah. loves it. I think he revels in it. I mean, in comparison to how he grew up. Yeah. So he, his dad was a, a military guy, sure. you know. So, you know, he grew up in a very militant, very... Regimented. Re yeah, very strict kind of environment. Mm. And his mom was not necessarily the most embracing until I came along. Because I'm super affectionate and sure. super loving. Mm. And so I guess I kind of softened things mm. <laughs> and then mm. brought a little bit of balance and i think even in him so he he's always embraced it and he's always loved it oh my mm. gosh yeah he loves it uh, now before we move on from africa yeah how let's talk about hashtag raising africa yeah so looking at how mama raised you guys mm. and i know mama's gonna watch this or listen to this sure what are you gonna take from mama's book of how to raise girls mm. and what are you excluding <sighs> Ooh, that's such a <laughs> difficult <laughs> mom. Where's my cat? Mom, you are the perfect mother. Go to everything, every Jensen, skip saka, show me so mate, mame, la o perfect mkotak. Look, um, it's crazy because I hear myself already. Yeah. Um, when I speak to her, when I reprimand her, when I'm kind of putting her in check, yeah. I hear my mother's voice. I sure. hear her. So mama comes through. Mama comes through quite strong. <laughs> Quite strong. You will not doubt. Sure. Um, it, uh, geez. I mean, I saw my mom really do the most with very little. Sure. Uh, my mom was also quite an embracing person. And we grew up putting other people first mm. in many instances. So my mom was the type of mother to, I mean, as we were growing up, my mom opened up her home to people to rent and they would stay with us, you know. So we had the kind of home that had the space that could accommodate other people. And she had such a nurturing, mm. she had such a nurturing, uh, hospitable energy. And so, yeah, there are times where maybe I felt like it was a little detrimental to herself. Sure. Uh, and she could have compromised herself in many ways. But mm. I think more than anything, I guess as a mother who is very protective, but also mm. one who feels like she needs to nurture and take care, yeah. I think she put that ahead of anything else. Mm. And I want to be able to do that as well. Sure. And I think she she's applied that in many ways in her life. Mm. You know, she's a woman who um, is of service. She sure. feels like she's here to serve. Mm. And no matter who you are, mm. um, she treats everyone with absolute respect, sure. you know, from a child to the elderly, no matter mm. what you do. And mm. so I think I've been able to do that. My mom leads with love and with kindness. Mm. Um, she has her strict moments. But again, you know, as a God fearing woman, but also as, a, as someone who embraces individuality and, you know, my mom wants the best for us, you know, sure. so mm. she wants us to look amazing and to feel good. And she mm. knows how to get the best out of all of us. So I want to be able to take all of that and and instill it in her in mm. Africa just to you know to increase that chain of I guess kindness beauty yes, yeah. and 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 authenticity hashtag raising Africa what are you leaving out that in terms of how mama raised you guys yo <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, mm. oh yeah that's the name of a TV show by the way hashtag raising Africa you're welcome anyway carry on your how about you five percent no, there next fine. no I love people to fly and make money so. <laughs> 
Yeah, I love that. Thank so, you. So, yeah. What am I leaving out? Mm -hmm. um, and is Mama aware that you felt like this as you guys were being raised? No. Okay, so it might be news to you, girl. Yeah. But I say this with love. We were quite conscious, very self-conscious. Mm. Yeah? Um, but, like, my mom always wanted us to look amazing all mm. the time. Mm. How you had like you, you needed to look presentable. Yeah, make sure you're wearing a clean hey, if I'm out, how, hey, yeah, I'm not, if you're how in to a car accident. Man, I, yeah. can't, I, I, I think it's important. Yeah. I think so. But, um, you know, my mom also like, she's such a beauty standards mm. type of person. Mm. So, you know, being made up and looking pretty all the time. It's very hard to keep up with that sometimes, yeah. you know. So I think I just want to... Instill so you want to relax that a bit? I want to relax that a bit. Yeah. If you want to wear a onesie in your class. If you want to wear a onesie to buy bread. Yeah, I want to. Hey, I want to wear a onesie. But who cares? Exactly. <laughs> you know? So yeah, I, I guess maybe less of Bazotina Bantu. Mm. Um, yeah, and just more of what she she thinks and feels. Mm. More than what she thinks other people will think and feel. Sure. sure. Yeah. So this show is called Wow What a Week. So yeah. we also look at things that, that have been happening in the week. Sure. And one of the big stories was uh, the Chidima Edichena story. Yeah. Um, and I, I think, didn't they come to your studio, Miss S.A.? Yes. Uh, to dance and everything yes. else? Yes. So they came to the studio and one of their challenges, so every single week they were put to a challenge. Yes. And they had a dance challenge that they had. This uh, was for Chasing the Crown or something? For Chasing the Crown. So okay. there's a reality show yes. called Chasing the Crown. Yeah. And in one of the weeks there was a dance challenge mm. and they came to Wintla Mundisela Dance Studios sure. along with Robot Boy. It was such a good time. It did, was a did, fun time. Did you ever in your wildest dreams ever s think you'd say one day and they came to the Buntle Multicellular Studios? Absolutely not. Sounds so dope, dude. Eh? It's so incredible. <laughs> Absolutely not. I think there's so many things that have happened that are such a mind-blowing experience for yeah. me that in hindsight, because you know, you we're in these moments, right? Yeah. We're living them in real yeah. time and yeah. then in hindsight, it's like, yo, actually, yeah. that's not a small thing. That's not like... At all. In the history of dance on this concert, yeah. continent, very few people will ever be able to say what you just said. 100%. 100%. That's how so big a deal it is. It's a big deal. So yeah. I got to host the top 16 sure. of Miss South Africa, mm. met all of the candidates. Sure. Obviously, I mean, we had, it was a, a very brief time, sure. but developed such a beautiful personal relationship with all of them. Mm. And just to see the excitement and the resilience and the commitment, whether they were familiar with dance or not, yeah. the challenge was how do you adapt to an environment maybe that's a little bit uncomfortable mm. and how does your authenticity and true self ah. reflect within that kind of space? Yes. Does your confidence mm. grow or does it diminish a little bit? And sure. how do you how do you adapt to such challenges? Mm. You know, um, but because it was all in the name of fun and entertainment, yeah. it wasn't an intimidating environment, ah, an yes. intim intimidating space. Mm. Neither did we take that approach. Sure. Um, so you know, when I, what I saw happen uh, with Chidima, I found quite unfortunate. Mm. Um, in fact, let me ask you a question. Sure. And I'm going to frame it like this sure. intentionally. Got you. In the event that there wasn't a possible fraudulent ID story, mm, mm, backstory, mm. so everything was straight, mm. what are your thoughts on the noise that was happening around this? I mean, the noise was a lot of opinion. Yeah. Right? Mm. So I don't think... Uh, I don't think my thoughts and opinions on it are neither here nor there. Neither do they supersede what the law says. Mm. So I can feel whatever type of way, mm. which if I were to express my opinion, I have no issue with mm. the fact that, I mean, she is South African born or mm. she was born in South Africa. So mm. technically speaking, and I would imagine that even the body of Miss South Africa mm. would have done the necessary um, mm. work to mm. make sure that everyone who's a part of it mm. is someone that qualifies. Mm. So if the Miss South Africa body found that she qualified sure. and under the law, mm. she, she is deemed South African, mm. then it doesn't really matter how okay. I feel. Okay, uh, so that's outside the, there might be a fake ID. Outside of that. Okay, okay. So if we didn't know about a fake ID, if there was nothing about fraud, yeah. but it was pre all of that, Ex absolutely. then yeah. But I mean, now that we know that there's mm. fraud involved, I mean, it's a different story altogether. Absolutely. Um, but nonetheless, so it happened and it is what it is. In fact, your studio is downtown Josie. Yes, Dorothy Fontaine. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts of downtown Johannesburg? 
I grew up and I spent a lot of time there. I went to school. You're the Peria girl. You wanna Peria? I went to school at Johannesburg Girls Preparatory School. Yes. So I walked the streets of Peria and Hillbro. So like like I'm quite street smart. Yeah. Um, and so the streets of Joburg are very familiar to me. It's mm. not a, I don't find it a scary place. Mm. Um, obviously, you know, you gotta walk and tread carefully and Absolutely. you've gotta be quite vigilant. Mm. But uh yeah, but that was pretty much home for a very, very long time. Mm. Yeah. And then do you feel safe downtown Josie now? Your no, stu- not stu- with where I am now. Your studio being downtown? <laughs> I'm moving, yeah. quite honestly. Um, mm. So we're moving spaces, uh, but it's for primarily because of the people who come to the space, yeah. who are mostly children and sure. women, mm. uh, security over everything. And oh, so yes. we want to move them to a space mm. where they will feel safer. Yes. Um, yeah, and they won't have to think twice about coming to downtown Josie. I've, I've come across way too many people who are like, I really want to come. I really want to support you. But, but the location was not <laughs> ideal. Yeah. So even for me, loved it. Mm. I mean, at the Hallmark um, Hotel, 15 stories or 15 floors up the sky. It's a rooftop. The scenery is gorgeous. I mean, mm. you look over and above Josie and you're like, yeah, this is beautiful. Yes. Yeah, but when you walk in those streets, <laughs> Absolutely. it's a little dangerous. Nonetheless, though, we are moving spaces um, and I cannot wait to open the doors again. I'm happy for you. Thank you. So how did Macaulay House happen? <gasps> let, let, me, let me tell you why I'm asking about uh, Macaulay House. Yeah. Because uh, the mother of my cubs yeah. uh, went to Macaulay House. Really? So I think she was the first or the second black kid that is wild. That was enrolled at Macaulay House in the 80s. No way. And she was the probably the first and only black kid at Macaulay House that played Annie in the no. musical. Yeah. So they had to make freckles on a little face. So, so yeah. That is insane. It's wild, eh? That is wild. So by the time you got to Macaulay House, it was more integrated. It was very integrated. Yeah, yeah we had more black kids. Absolutely. <laughs> by the time I got there. So obviously, um, in the absence of uh, Papa, yeah. Mama is doing all the moves. Absolutely. Mama is doing what she needs to make happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How much of your opinions were part of decisions Mama was making in terms of whether it's the schools you go to, mm. for instance? Uh, my mom involved us quite a bit. Yeah. I think she invited us making decisions. Obviously, hers was the final word. Absolutely. But I think as well, it was also circumstantial in the sense that we were scholarship kids. Mm. So we all got a scholarship and we all got the opportunity to go to, a, mm. to really good schools. Sure. And so for me, the option came down to Macaulay. So I was there on scholarship. Mm. Um, and so I think otherwise, had it not been for that scholarship, I don't know if I would have gone, sure. quite honestly. Also because it was a Catholic school. Yes. I don't think my mom minded, you know, mm. but it's not like we're Catholic. Yeah. <laughs> but I but, think... But, but, but a convent will give direction. But a any, convent will give direction. To any girl. Yes. Yeah. So I think for, for my mom, she found quite a bit of comfort in that. Sure. Um, and I didn't mind as well. Surely it says a lot about Ma and the kind of girl she was raising. Yeah. That you guys kicked so much ass that schools would give you scholarships. Because you don't get a scholarship because we feel sorry for you. No. You get a scholarship because you earn it. Because you work hard. Yes. Because we know you will follow through. Yeah. And those are the kind of girls mama raised. Oh, she absolutely How dope is that? That's (laughs) it. You see that? I need Africans to get a whole bunch of scholarships. (laughs) I need that work ethic. But I think as well, I think um, we were kids who were quite aware of Mm. our situation. Mm. And more than anything, we wanted to relieve her in as many ways So you as we knew could. you had to no. come through for her? No, we knew. Where you could? We knew. Yeah. We knew. Um, but I think that also came from Rifile, her being the firstborn. Mm. And how she stepped up in many ways. I mean, she didn't have to. But I think as a firstborn, if you have a missing parent in the home, in mm. many ways you feel like you need to step up. Absolutely. And, and match that energy so that it doesn't feel like there's anyone missing and so because we saw that in real time with her Mm. we felt like we needed to follow suit Mm. and it was big uh uh, uh, big shoes to fill we we felt but we uh, yeah we've always been conscious and aware of it and i think since then we've always felt like we've needed to relieve mama Mm. and to help ourselves but relieve her as much as possible Mm. falling in love young (gasps) <gasps> and then staying in love. Yeah. And then carrying on with the relationship. Sure. What conversations are you having with mom about boys? Oh, When you fall wow. in love young. <laughs> it's interesting because my mom... Oh, this is so fun. My mom... Um, 
referred to boyfriends as a friend. Uh, so even the boyfriend term just never came out of hey, my mom's true, mouth. Hey, so friend. Yeah. Friend, yeah. you know? And so my mom knew. Mm. Um, my mom also, uh, oh, and I love this as well. And I think this is the one thing. It's, my mom found a really good balance between being a mother and a friend to us. Mm -hmm. And so that friendship part came in really it came through strongly in moments where we needed to have uncom uncomfortable conversations whether mm. it was conversations that had to do with menstrual hygiene sure. or even boys and mm. how to relate to them mm. and relationships and mm. so my mom even though she never used the term she was open to have those conversations sure. and in many ways my mom was also the older we became my mom was also very comfortable in using herself as an example oh. so she was open to expressing where she felt flawed, mm -hmm. where she felt like she could have decided differently. Sure. Um, and my mom also likes to give you the option of various things. And if she needs to play devil's advocate, she mm -hmm. will. Mm -hmm. But I think she wants to exercise the ability that you have autonomy over yourself, your own body. But more than anything, do not compromise yourself in any way, shape or form. Mm -hmm. Form she man. Sure you know mm. but um yeah but i i think she knew and i think any girl child or any child kind of wants to keep it a secret mm. about Ola, especially sure. if you start early on mm. but you know a mother can gauge okay you know there's certain things that change so, your so, posture changes yes. your style changes mm. how you engage with boys changes so yeah how, how all of a sudden anything with a reflection becomes a mirror well and nothing because you must make sure your everything exactly. is in position exactly <laughs> now you want to change like so there's so many things that you yeah. you become very uh, aware of and self-conscious about you mm. know but again my mom just made it a very open and a comfortable space for us to have those conversations so how old were you and hubby when you met we were 15 mm. when we met um but we met through these dance circles. Ah, yes, and yes, at the yes, time yes. he was a crampa, sure. Nachaiva, you know. So Mr. Man. In Mr. Man. Yeah, yeah. You know? um, so he was this crampa and I was like, oh, that's fine, boy. Mm -hmm. You know, and cramping was a thing as well. Like it was such a like a a, a power, but also like a, a, a spiritual dance form. Sure. We treated it that way. Exactly. So and he was one of the best but, in it. But also it comes with an attitude that you can't put on. No, no, no. You can't cramp no. Without the attitude, absolutely. Because then, otherwise, what? No, are you, you can't doing? be nice about it. Then you are cramping, not cramping. You are cramping. You are cramping. You know. So there was a persona, there was a character, there was an energy mm. that that he had that sure. I found very attractive, and mm. I was just like, oh, okay. Sure. Um, uh, and you know, there were crampel and nap up. And you know, the dance community at the time is quite small, so you sure. know, so conversations about who's the best, uh, mm. like it, it circles around really quickly. Sure. Um, so I knew of him before I knew him personally. Mm -hmm. um, and then he saw me on Chiga Machiga. Oh, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. And then the following week we met in person. Uh, well, he saw me before I did. Mm -hmm. And I was at a competition and he came to the competition sp specifically specifically sure. to come watch me and um yeah and since then you know he had sent someone to come get my number and yep. since then, we sp I, i'm telling you and then he got my number we spoke sure. via mix it mm. and then we developed a really good friendship from there and then we started dating sure three years later mm. yeah i ordinarily wouldn't ask a married woman this question sure but i'm also asking it because a lot of us are raising either teenagers mm. or future teens. Ah. What conversations were you having with him about when and if you'll possibly give it up? <gasps> oh. and, and I'll tell you, and I'll also let you know why I'm asking this. For instance, sure. for instance, for instance with me, uh, my first serious relationship, I was 14, she was 14. Mm. And when you're 14, your hormones are raging. Of course. So for me, I felt worried. <laughs> but she was like, no, we're not. Mm. So for 13 months, we broke up about eight times. Mm. So every time I felt like, ah, but worried, mm. she dumped me. <laughs> and then, uh, so we're at boarding school. Yeah. And then we'd make up. Mm. And then two months later, I'm like, my, my, your, the hormones are, mm. are hormony. Mm. Like, how about baby, what age? <laughs> and then she dumped me again. Yeah. So, uh, hence I'm asking this, that it's yeah. at a time where hormones often are top of mind for a guy. Sure. But for a girl, your focus might be something else. Yeah. But you guys falling in love early mm. means you're going through all of that together at the same time. Absolutely. So, what conversations are you guys having about where, when, yeah. and, and if you're going to give it up? We 
Oof, it took a while mm. um, for us to get into it. But also, quite interestingly enough, um, even if Ricardo's hormones were raging, yeah. raging mm. I didn't, he didn't project it onto me. Sure, sure. Um, and he was quite careful to approach me and that conversation with caution. Mm. So he really didn't make me feel like it was something that he wanted versus mm. all the people that I came across in high school. And I think that's what really attracted him, me to him ah. was the fact that he didn't make it the first. He came to you differently. He came to me differently. Mm. His approach was different. Sure. His timing was different. Mm. His um, respect for me was different. Mm. And in the dance space, you know, they use dancing as a, a courting thing. Sure, and sure. you know what I'm saying? So yeah, it was the, way, like, the way the animal kingdom does. <laughs> exactly. And animals exactly you know <laughs> mm. and i found that quite interesting so i think for me off the bat i i i really appreciated that mm. and obviously like as you keep growing and you you, you know we we continue to have the conversations mm. and the more comfortable we became about having those conversations and we expressed maybe past experiences if sure. we were experiences mm. what our points of comfort and discomfort were mm. so we really made it an open conversation to say sure. okay this is what we like or these are what our past experiences experiences were mm. before we had our own personal experience absolutely so i think um also because we in our friendship so in that two three years mm. we would have conversations and we would ask each other for advice so mm. i had an in and he had an in on what those ah, okay. experiences you. were you mm. know and uh, you know and we grew up with that so then when it became a, a relationship between him and i mm. me being aware of what he had gone through and mm. the things that I had gone through. Again, we, we treated lightly um, and respectfully um, to that conversation. When you're building a relationship with someone. Sure. With a foundation of a friendship first, mm. the way you guys did. What are the advantages and disadvantages of having laid your heart bare before the relationship? Mm. Because sometimes you realize in hindsight that maybe I let go of too much. Mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> hmm. I'm wondering if I've ever felt that way with mm. him. I don't think I'd ever felt like it was too much too soon. Sure. Or he never made me feel that way. Mm. I think it was more of me overthinking oh, yes. and feeling like I did too much or I said too much. Mm. But you know when someone, again, makes you feel like they are a safe space and you're able to do that? Absolutely. And so uh, not once did he ever use anything against me. Mm. Not once, even in our points of contention yeah. or disagreeing, mm. did he ever use anything that he could have. He could have weaponized any kind of information. Absolutely. And he never did, you know. And, and, and often it's one of the reasons men don't want to open up to women. Yeah. Or they don't want to uh, bear their souls to women. Yeah. Because the fear of, of a lot of men is she's going to use it against them. No. Mm. And I think I've, I've never done that to him either. Mm. I don't... I don't see the need. Yeah. I don't. I don't think it's important, mm. you know. And I think in our moments of contention or, or disagreeing, I'm not in a hurry to hurt you. Mm. In fact, so you guys fight with love. Yeah, mm. and the thing is, we attacked the. We, our, our 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 school of thought is attack the problem, not each other. Sure. Mm. So, why are we here? How did we get here? And mm. how do we fix it? Mm. And. Yes, in our moments of introspection, you know, then, and even we'll have like really, really uncomfortable mm, conversations. Mm. Fresh, we've been together for years. Absolutely. For years. You know each other's warts and all. Mamela. <laughs> the things that people don't want to talk about, yeah. the conversations mm. of even other people, sure. temptation, mm. um, you know, uh, having grown up with each other i remember one of the first things that i said to him when i was younger was i was like look if you ever grow bored of me please let me know mm. and if we need to part ways let me know mm. because in my mind i was already set on the fact that we're probably going to spend the rest of our lives together sure. yeah. but we're young mm. and i wanted to make room for him i guess exploring whatever it is that he wanted to explore without Absolutely. losing him totally and completely mm. so again it's being able to have conversations mm. like that to mm. say we're going to grow. We're yeah. going to grow up together. We're mm. also going to grow at different rates. Our, 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 our personalities are going to change, but we need to adapt to that change. And how do I learn to love you in the time that we're changing? 
What do you say to people who say it's a bad idea to fall in love young mm -hmm. before having experienced sowing your royal oats or whatever you want to mm. call it? What do you say to those people who say because you don't know anything else, temptation might be even more mm. than if I've played the field, mm. I'm ready to settle down? Uh, you know... <sighs> I speak from a very privileged place because mm. I feel like my situation and my person is unique. Sure. And maybe others would say that it's rare mm. <laughs> that you can find someone so soon and so early mm. and find love and feel like it's that authentic and that honest and mm. that genuine and this, that and the fifth. But... I mean, I look at couples who say like a nasty Sienna Sammy mm. um, or, you know, Shane Eagle um, and, and his partner. Mm. It is, it's possible to find love young mm. and it's possible to grow in love, mm. even when you grow independently, sure. right? It is possible. Mm. There will be challenges. Sure. And it won't be void of mm. those challenges. How do you guys deal with the trust issues and the temptations that plague our industry, especially? Mm. It's not easy. Yeah. <laughs> it really isn't. Mm. Um, absolutely, you will be tried and tested. Mm. But again, I think for him and I, because very early on, we established the fact that we could have the difficult conversations and yeah. we could say, Horesh, yeah, I had this kind of encounter mm. and this happened. Sure. How does it make you feel? Mm. I know you don't want to hear this. Mm. It may not be nice to hear, but I just feel like I need to tell you because. So you have those uncomfortable conversations. Yeah. 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 In fact, I remember <laughs> there's an uncomfortable conversation we, we had in our marriage about if God forbid, for whatever reason, mm. we are unable to provide conjugal uh, uh, privileges mm. to one another. Mm. How would you feel about the other, or would you encourage the other to take a lover? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because for whatever reason, mm -hmm. the other can't provide mm. that part of the relationship. Sure. Because you're a complete human being. Absolutely. And you'd like to have every itch scratched. Yes. Uh, 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 in inverted commas. Yeah. Um, and I, I remember we had that uncomfortable conversation mm. that, you know, God forbid, if I'm in a wheelchair or you're in a wheelchair sure. or, or we can't provide conjugals to one another. Absolutely. Do you allow a third party mm. to enter the, the mm. you know, the, the party yes. or not? You know? <laughs> um, that's a conversation we've had. Mm. And I think, again... And, and how did it go? <laughs> <laughs> There are things that we understand. Yeah. There are things that we can do. <laughs> you know, and Elizabeth, don't think, Hori, whoever's listening, that you think you have an opportunity exactly. to. It's exactly. not that. Mm. And we're not saying we're opening up the opportunity of a third per Absolutely. party or a third Absolutely. person. Absolutely. We're not saying, oh, no, you can go full and go have a good time. Exactly. No, it's not that. But mm. it's to say that under certain circumstances, mm. openly, mm. ahead of certain things, sure. Make me understand mm. how and why you feel like you're at this point in your life exactly. and why you feel like you need this mm. so that I'm able to meet you there exactly. and I can work through those feelings. But mm. give me the opportunity to make a decision in and around that kind of conversation. Mm. Don't rob me of the opportunity to decide whether I want to partake. Mm. Don't volunteer me. Don't volunteer me. <laughs> but let's talk about it. Yeah. Should we get to that point? Mm. And I think it's important because, again, we are people. Exactly. Um, and I'm his wife and he is my husband, but he doesn't belong to me. Mm. And I, I, I treat my daughter the same way. It's like, yeah, but she's my daughter, but she's not mine. And I've said this. Mm. So I treat my marriage the same way. Sure. Um, and I would hate for him to get to a point in life where he just feels like he wants to take a certain decision. But mm. should he want to, mm. I need to 
be able to give me a choice to tap out if I need 100%. to. Hundred yeah. percent, which is fair enough. And where there are people, there are feelings, there are thoughts, there are emotions, mm. and they are ever evolving. Sure. And so I need to allow him to evolve and and grow in that way. And I would like him to afford me that same opportunity. Mm. But the idea is for us to grow together and to keep it together for yeah. forever. Yeah. This sounds like it's turning into a conversation about young love, but it doesn't matter. Ah! I, 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 think, I think there's there's young couples out there that might learn from you guys. I think it's important. Piano Love. Yeah. Tell us about that movie. Oh, wow. So Piano Love, myself, uh, my co-star, Cuesta. Yeah. It's out uh, first week of September. First right? week of September, so the 6th of September. Dope. I know in our initial announcement, we said the release date was going to be the 23rd yeah. of August, but it's been pushed a week back. Mm. Um, such an exciting, beautiful story. Mm. I remember the first time Mandla in of Black Brain mm. had called me in and he said, listen, this is what I see. This is what I envision. Mm. And I see you and Quested doing it. You know what the weird thing is? I can literally see Manja saying that to you. My man. And, and the way he speaks. Yeah, yeah you I know can, him. I can, I can see him. Very <laughs> passionate. Very <laughs> and he's like, trust me. Yeah. And I was like, Manja, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Does he, And uh, when I thought about my... One, I felt like I was completely out of whack. Sure. And, and because I hadn't exercised my acting muscle mm. in years. Yeah. Excuse me, but I didn't think I was capable. But yeah. you know when you've just lost or we, when you haven't, uh, again, exercised that muscle, mm. you just feel like, eh, you're not sure if you can do it, exactly. but hey, let's, let's trust. Let's mm. free fall and let's mm. see where we land. Mm. And so he said, Cuesta. And I was like, can okay. He, can he act? Can he act? Yeah. <laughs> but okay. Then we did a chemistry test. Yeah. And I was said, okay. Yeah, he can act. I, I see you. Yeah. I see you. Madman, Mantra, mm. but a visionary. He's like a mad scientist. Absolutely. Even when he explains, like he gives direction as a director. Absolutely. Because uh, I've seen him at work. Sure. And he's like this mad scientist, hip hop video producer making movies. <laughs> that's, 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 that's his passion. Yeah. But it's an incredible story. It's a beautiful story. Yeah. And I think people will be pleasantly surprised at... Um, Really at the performances, mm. number one. Mm. But again, it's a beautiful story. And, uh, you know, without giving away too much, of course, there's love. There's some drama in it. There's mm. some action. Mm -hmm. But at the heart of it, music. And there's also dance. Sure. Um, and how these kind... Uh, and, and, and how these two kind of interact and how we kind of bring each other back to life. Oh, yes. um, in love, but mm. also in art and in music and in expression. So who needs to watch Piano Love? Every single single person, yeah. anyone who cares about love, yeah. anyone who cares about action, mm. anyone who cares about drama, but anyone who cares about South African music, South African culture, South African dance, music culture, mm. through the lens of Ama Piano, ah, yes. you know, so it is a play on that, Piano mm. Love, Ama mm. Piano, mm. you know, and, uh, but it's not just that, because sure. the world of hip hop is also in there, mm. um, but again, you know, just anyone who has a pulse sure. <laughs> needs to watch Piano Love, they'll love it for sure. So when you read the script, yeah. do you sit with Habi and say, share with him what's going on, or is it a case of, oh, you'll see it in the movies? <laughs> no, so I read the script. <laughs> I read the script yeah. and I think I needed to be on the lookout for where our relationship was concerned. I needed to see for me how much intimacy there was between oh, yes, the love yes. interests mm. and me going back to my husband and saying, all right. Yeah. How, so, how much bum are you comfortable with? <laughs> <laughs> what are you comfortable with? What are you not comfortable with? How far can we take it? Yeah. And yeah, but we had to have that conversation, mm. of course, and how to that say go? this is... So I said, okay, so this is the script. Mm. This is w what's most likely to happen between these two lovers. Sure. How do you feel about this? Mm. What is a no-go zone? Mm. I'll let you know how I feel sure. and what I'm willing to do and how far I'm willing to go. Mm. And yeah, so I had that conversation with him first mm. before Quest and I had the conversation. Sure. So as we had to have the conversation too to mm. say, look, we're going in, in real time and in real life, we have real marriages and real families. Mm. Um, how do we respectfully 
honor the story, sure. but also respect our families and each other at the same time. And so I think we set the ground rules very early on, mm. um, but it was such a respectful space as well. Quest is, mm. Senzo's very, very respectful. He's a dope dude. He's such a dope dude. Yeah. He's so, he's mm. so cool, calm and collected. Mm. And we've spent very little time together on set. We mm. would only like during lunch, he's really in his own corner. Sure. Just really just, I guess as well, if this is your debut and you've never done something like mm. this, mm. you're really trying to, I can imagine you're not trying to lose yourself in whatever Absolutely. other noise is happening, but yeah. you're really trying to keep centered. Yes. Um, and so because we're also engaging our arts and we're bringing elements of our true and real selves mm. into these stories to make mm. it true and real um, yeah. to the characters and to mm. the story. Mm. You know, you you don't want a lot of noise um, around you. So we'd mm. meet often on set yeah. and then we'd speak. Mm. And then, you know, just, um, yeah, the performances were very quite, they were quite honest and mm. quite beautiful. So, yeah. Did you do any shoots early in the morning? Oh yeah, absolutely. And so, late at night, so we do AMs. I'm not worried about a later, just early in the morning. I'm sure Krista's voice is so deep. No one can hear him. No one can hear him. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not possible to hear it five times deeper. And it is. If you don't think it could go five times deeper. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Now you guys must wait for him. Like, yeah. My man, talk for an hour. So you just move the... Look up the warm up, look up the ginger. Look at the Exactly. <laughs> but he's great though yeah. such good people listen man uh, I invited you here just so we could have a quick catch up thank you so and much and also just to say to you you kick butt oh thank um, you been a fan of your work since five six years ago and I interviewed you first yeah and it's beautiful to see you growing incrementally all the time thank you so much and for me I need you to personally say to Ma mm. thank you because oh. I think she has raised powerhouses of women mm. and if half of us raising girls do half the work she did I think we'll be fine. Oh, thank you. Uh, so please shout out to Ma. I will. Ma, you heard it, ne? Okay. Oh yeah, Ma is watching. <laughs> yes, Ma. Watching. Shout out to you, Ma. Or is it a bar? I see it how we must No help. pressure. We meet this bar and raise powerhouses <laughs> yeah. like these. Thank but you. shout out, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. Really, yeah. really appreciate and it. And tell Habi, shout out to him. I love him also. I know. I think he's cool people. Thank you so much. So, so yeah. I appreciate it. Thank well, you. I've been wanting to come. What's your so thank talk? you for having me. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Ma Afrika <laughs> is about to leave the building. <laughs>